Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to be shouting with it. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Revelation 5, I'm going to read verse 11. Then I'm going to go to Revelation 12. Then I'm going to go to Hebrews 1. That should give you an idea of what the rest of my notes look like right there. I got three opening scriptures. <laughs> Revelation 5, you got to say amen. amen. This is John. He's before the throne of God in heaven. He's having a vision here. And this is what he sees in verse 11. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And the number of them, that is the angels, was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So you work out that number in your head. How many angels that is? Billions? Potentially. I don't know. Revelations 12, verse 7 through 9 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. The devil's been a loser for a very long time. That's why you should just remind him, Devil, you're a, you know you're a loser, right? Like, uh, you, go ahead and put the L up. Lay who? This is your hair. <laughs> He's been losing for a long time. He's just, <laughs> amen. Verse 8, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse number 13, it's on the screen in case you didn't turn that fast. I got it here, so I'm Superman today. Verse 13, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not, speaking of the angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? I want to start a series tonight called Angels and Demons. Angels and Demons, part one. Praise God. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us here tonight. Give us revelation, give us knowledge, give us understanding. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for the presence that we feel here in this place, Lord. And I pray that your glory would manifest in here today, Lord Jesus, oh God. We come before you humbly, Lord God, submitting our hearts and our minds, Lord God, open to receive knowledge and revelation from your word, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would help me, Lord God, to rightly divide the word of truth, Lord Jesus, oh God. I pray that you help me to minister it, Lord God, that it should edify the body and prepare us, Lord God, for the spiritual warfare that you have called us to interact with, Lord. I pray tonight that your will would be done. Oh God, make the devil a loser one more time, Jesus, Lord God. As we lift up your name, Jesus, we glorify you today. We magnify you, God. We give you all of the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. If you haven't Yes, I can't stand my keys being in my pocket while I preach it. Don't like it. I don't know why. Amen. In the Old Testament, God went by many different names and titles. The name that was revealed unto Moses, you're probably familiar. When Moses asked, who should I, who should I say sent me? He said, my God told him, I am that I am. Tell them that I am has sent you. And that name is a four-letter Hebrew word that is Y-H-W-H. Um, it has no vowels, it's unpronounceable, and most of the time it's substituted in, as the word Adonai in the Hebrew, or Lord in all caps. If you have a King James Version, you look in the Old Testament, you'll see capital O, capital R, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and that is the word uh, Yahweh, or Yehovah, or Jehovah, depending on who you ask. Nobody knows the actual pronunciation uh, because there were no vowels, so you just had to kind of hear somebody save it, say it, okay? But all of those names are referring to the same word, the name of God, the eternal one. Uh, and later on, the name was given many adjectives to describe a characteristic or revelation that God was to them at a particular time. One time, 
The Lord re revealed himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh. Where he said the Lord sees and provides. Praise God. He also revealed himself one time as Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that healeth thee. So God is our healer. One time he also revealed himself as Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. Praise God. How many is glad for that? Peace that passeth all understanding. Amen. But one name that is mentioned is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. David mentions this in Psalm 24, verse 9. He says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Then he asks a rhetorical question, who is this king of glory? He says, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory, Selah. The Lord of hosts in the Hebrew is Jehovah Sabaoth. It means the Lord of angel armies. It means that the Lord commands all of the armies of the angels that were created in heaven. The fact is that there are an innumerable amount of angels created by God for his purpose and will to be accomplished. These angels were created as spiritual beings that cannot be perceived with any of your five senses. You cannot just pick out an angel in their natural form, but they are real and they exist. They are a part of the ministry of the working of God. Uh, these spiritual beings, both positive and negative, exist, and they can be in a place and you not even know it. Matter of fact, I would propose to you that there are probably thousands upon thousands of angels here right now. Amen. As we begin to worship and glorify God, the Bible says we join in with the angels because they worship and glorify God. Amen. And you kind of want to join in with the angels because as we'll find out a little bit later, angels have supernatural powers. Praise God. Amen. They can do and manifest some very peculiar things in the Bible that man cannot do. And so you cannot, just because you can't see it doesn't mean that they are not always there. This is why it is foolish to walk by only what you can see. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And it's also foolish to live by what you only see. They say, well, you only live once. No, there is a whole spiritual realm with beings that exist in that spiritual realm that we cannot perceive in the forms we are right now. This is why Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Because you, there's a part that God is going to give you that is the invisible. Praise God. It cannot be seen. What we can see are things that are temporary. The things that cannot be seen are the things that are eternal. And these bodies we were created in are only created to operate in things that are temporary, in time, upon this earth. But when God gives us a resurrection, when he births us again by his spirit, when he calls us out of the grave in the air to meet him in the clouds we will have the ability to traverse the spiritual realm and the natural realm that's why it's foolish to say people say well there are no god can you imagine upon somebody saying there is no god and around their head is going angels floating by going to and fro amen and they're sitting there saying, well, there is no God. All this happened by circumstances. And the angels are sitting up there like, dummy. <laughs> That's a foolish statement. Even humanity has figured out how to operate things based off of means you can't see. Everybody have a cell phone in your hand? Okay, how does the communication happen in that thing? Okay. It's invisible, isn't it? And right now, we have an access point right up there, and it's pushing out waves of energy called radio waves at particular frequencies that your phone can pick up on. And you can get information downloaded through an invisible medium. Matter of fact, I can look at someone's face on my phone called FaceTime. And all of that happens through cell signals, which are radio signals that are sent out that your devices are programmed to interact with. How is it then that we think that with our limited intelligence, we can create things like microwaves and radio waves and infrared and all of the spectrum of light that we cannot see, but yet God is somehow limited to that or that doesn't exist. The devil is a liar. That's why Proverbs said, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. The reality is there is a spiritual world and there are spiritual beings that exist in that world. Sometimes people get nervous talking about angels because uh, maybe we're ignorant concerning what the scriptures have to say about it. 
Or some people just don't believe in the supernatural, kind of like the Sadducees. Uh, the Sadducees were a, a political group in the New Testament. They, they came against Jesus, and they didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in the spiritual beings. They thought their Savior was going to come like David, just to, just to be a political warrior to relieve them from the oppressive government of the Romans. That's how they thought Jesus, their Savior, was going to come. When Jesus said, I came not for them that are whole, but for them that are sick, uh, they, they weren't really trying to receive that. Praise God. And so the Sadducees didn't believe in supernatural things. Some people also, also have fear or superstition concerning unseen realm of spiritual beings. There's also the danger of praying to or worshiping angels. Let me say this before we go any further. We do not worship. We do not adore. We do not pray to angels. That's called idolatry. Idolatry. If you read, I think it's in Deuteronomy 32. Uh, I'll get to that more in detail when we talk about the demon portion of it. Uh, but the Bible references these beings as demons. The word demon is only found in the Old Testament two times. One in Psalm and one in Deuteronomy 32. And it calls out the Canaanites for worshiping multiple gods whom the Bible says were not gods at all, but they were demons. So every religion that worships multiple gods, what they're worshiping is fallen angels. Mm. So all the, all the gods of Hinduism, fallen demons. All the gods of, why do you think they can have thousands of them? Because there's thousands of fallen angels out here trying to get worship. Hello, and God made it very clear in that same book of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. How do you know a devil? They'll try to get more than one in there. Mm. Woo, help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. There are about 300 references to angels in the Bible, both in the Hebrew and Greek words for angel actually mean messenger messenger. So when you see the word angel, it really means just a messenger of God. Jesus himself spoke often of angels and was ministered to by angels. And one portion he said he could call legions of angels on his behalf. In the garden, the Bible says he was ministered to by angels. He was led up by the spirit and then tempted by a fallen angel called Lucifer. And so in this series, we're going to take a dive into these spiritual beings to gain an understanding of what they are their purpose, and how they are used by God on our behalf. First of all, we got to establish the difference between angels and demons. Angels and demons are alike in their form, but they are both spiritual uh, beings, okay? Uh, where they differ is in their objectives and destiny. When the Bible refers to angels, they're really messengers of the Lord that have an allegiance to God alone. These angels are loyal to God, not man not you, not any denomination, not any country, not any people. These angels are loyal to God. However, when we see demons, on the other hand, they are the evil of sort and not oftentimes represented as adversary or Satan, which just means the opposer, okay? Satan is not the official name of the devil. His name is actually Lucifer. Satan word means adversary, one that opposes. And so demons are angels that are fallen, but they oppose God, and they oppose God's people. Both the Israelite, the Jews, and the New Testament born-again believers are opposed by demons. This is why I say we have to pray. We have to engage in spiritual warfare and understand what is going on. Paul told us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. He was giving you the hierarchy of demonic structure that you're actually fighting against. So when somebody or something comes against you, it's not the actual thing. There's an unseen spirit behind the thing that is an adversary to the will of God and to you, praise God. He's the enemy of your soul, and he fights against the church. And so Paul gives us this revelation that what we see is not really what we're wrestling against, which is why we can pray for our enemies, because that flesh and blood is not my enemy. There's a spirit behind that person that is my enemy and is opposing me. So if we can drive out the spirit, we can win a soul. Praise God. Amen. So let's look at how this, how this all took place. The story of Lucifer begins, uh, we get some detail in Ezekiel 28, verse 
13 to 17. Now, Ezekiel, if you haven't read Ezekiel and you want something fun to read, just go and put, put on the NLT version and let it read to you. And I guarantee you by the first chapter, you'll be like, what in the world? I've got an angel with four heads and six wings and eyes everywhere and wheels. they got eyes in them and wheels in the wheels that are crossway like this and they don't turn. And, you know, with two they fly, with two they cover their bodies, and with two they, you know, they did something else. I mean, it's just radical version he has of the manifest moving chariot of God. Praise God. But then Ezekiel also gets some very radical prophecies, too, and this is one of them. He's the only one given detail about Lucifer. And he's prophesying this actually uh, uh, to Tyre at Sodom, and he's giving this, telling you what the spirit behind this king is. Uh, verse 13, Ezekiel 28, verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis. The topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Look at this. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Praise God. And I have set thee, uh, excuse me, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect. Lucifer was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. This is the creation story of Lucifer. It tells you that he was created as the anointed cherub that covereth. We'll get into cherub a little bit later, but cherub is a type of angel that hovered around the throne of God and covered the throne of God. And Satan or Lucifer was this specific one that was covered specifically with all kinds of brilliant stones was his covering. And he also had pipes and tabrets, which is like, which is like woven skin instruments on it um, that, that would out undoubtedly produce music for worship and the idea is that he would reflect the light of God he himself not being the source of the light he would reflect the light that's what his name means the angel of light he would reflect this light and as he as he moved worship was going forth so he covered the throne of God with beauty and with worship but the Bible says that iniquity was found in him he was got lifted up in pride. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? I remember Jay-Z had that song with that clip in it, sample Lucifer, son of the morning. Everybody remember that song? He's trying to tell you who he really is, calling himself Jehovah. He's trying to be like God in the same way Lucifer did. Amen. I used to be throwing my diamonds up in the air at the concert too. Mm. Foolishness. Didn't, didn't even know it either. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation. In the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of of the pit. So Lucifer was not created to be the devil. He made himself the devil because pride was found in him because of his beauty. This is why the Bible teaches us that we shouldn't be focused on the outward beauty. 
mm, that goes into a holiness series, and we'll, maybe I'll do that after this one. When it's, a, it's, a, it's about time for it, but, but this is why the Bible tells us we should not be adorned with things beauty on the outside because that produces pride, but rather he tells us to have that inward beauty, praise God, that comes from the, the indwelling of the Spirit of God. But he saw his own beauty. He saw his own perfection and wanted to rebel and exalt himself above God. And above all the angels. And not shortly after that, he fell down. He was cast down out of heaven. And not only himself, but a third of the angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. Revelation 12, same chapter, verse 7. And there was war in heaven, and Michael, Michael's the big bad boy with the big bad guns. You don't want to mess with Michael. You don't even hear him talking too much throughout the Bible. He just come to beat somebody up and then leaves. <laughs> For real, it is multiple times. Michael shows up like, psh, 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 and he's just gone. <laughs> Michael and his angels, so Michael's like the warrior division, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Can you imagine a heavenly war? You ma is it, and and this, this is where Hollywood, you know, tries to come and fill in the blank for us to create all this stuff that imaginative, all the Avengers stuff where they had, you know, especially Thor, that was so biblical, it was crazy, where they had this place that they dwelt and they walked up on this clear ice looking thing and there was war going up there that was in a different realm than where the humans dwelt and he came down to save humanity. It, it, they just stole the story from the Bible. But can you imagine a war of angels? Ugh. Jesus. But verse 8, prevailed not, neither was found any place more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. And I love this. This is all the way in the book of Revelation. We don't get the whole revelation that the serpent was the devil until the end of the Bible. He's just called the serpent in the Old Testament. Mm. Help us, Lord. Called the devil. And Satan, which deceiveth, this is what his trick is. He deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, this event likely happened in the beginning, before man was created, and before the garden was formed. Because we can see the serpent in the garden, beginning his role of deception towards Eve. That old serpent the devil. So we can assume that in heaven there remains two-thirds of the angels that are loyal to God, while on earth one-third of the angels are demons being loyal to Satan. So let's do some math. Our opening scripture said there were thousands, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands that were in heaven. That's two-thirds. <laughs> that means the rest of them are here roaming the earth, trying to do the same thing that they've been trying to do since the beginning, like Pinky and Brain. What are we going to do today? <laughs> Try, trying to take over the world. So two-thirds of the angels have their loyalty to God. One-third of their angels have the loyalty to Satan. Jesus confirms this. A very peculiar scripture. Mark chapter 3, verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of devils cast he out devils. They're trying to come against Jesus. Say, the only reason why he can cast out devils is because he got a devil. They're trying to justify the works that he's doing, trying to call Jesus a devil. <laughs> and verse 23, Jesus said, And he called unto, them, uh, unto him and said unto him in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Well, the understanding is that even in these fallen demonic angels, there is structure, there is order, and all of them still take their marching orders from the devil. Mm. We even find out in the book of Daniel, there's a, a demon called the Prince of Persia that withstands Gabriel. 
which shows us that these demons might even have jurisdiction, meaning that there's a different demons over different regions. This is why Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. This is different hierarchies. It would be as if you said we wrestle against cities, counties, states, and countries. Different areas, different demons. They always say a higher level, a higher devil. There's some truth to that. And so this separates the angels from demons, fallen angels from the holy angels of God. So then we have to look at what are the angels and what is their job. Hebrews 1, I read this already, but I'll read it again, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? What does minister mean? It means a servant. Spirit, that means they're intangible, okay? And their purpose is to minister to the heirs of salvation. Who's that? That's you. Raise your hand and say, that's me. So what are the angels' responsibility? They help and serve us. Praise God. They're there to serve God's and God's people. Now, we don't have any direct command over the angels. They are spiritual beings and have spiritual, supernatural abilities. We see angels all throughout the Bible. It was an angel that ministered to Hagar and Ishmael when they had been cast out and were about to die in the desert. It was two angels that rescued Lot out of Sodom before its destruction. An angel of the Lord stopped Abraham as he was about to sacrifice Isaac. It was an angel that wrestled with Jacob and changed his name to Israel. It was the angel of the Lord that gave Moses the revelation of the name of God from the burning bush. It was the angel of God's presence went before Israel in the pillar of cloud and fire to lead them. Can you imagine just a pillar of fire? This angel manifested. You're walking and you're following a big pillar of fire. Where are we going? I don't know. We're following this angel right here. Anybody know his name? Nope. Fire. <laughs> and in a cloud. All angelic manifestation. This is pretty awesome stuff to me. You know, I'm wishing the Lord would do, would do this just, just for show in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. It was an angel of the Lord that appeared to Gideon and commissioned him as the deliverer of Israelites. It was an angel that brought food and drink to the prophet Elijah when he was in famine. It was an angel that delivered Daniel in the lion's den. They threw Daniel in a den of lions. And the angel went down there and shut up the lion's mouth. Said, shut up. You read the story. I just read it yesterday because I've been doing a lot of reading. I read it again yesterday. and <laughs> They shut the lion's mouth, and then Daniel's accusers after, and then they pulled him out, and then uh, the angel left. And then they threw all Daniel's accusers in, their whole family and their children. And the Bible says they didn't even hit the floor. The lions just leaped on them and ate them up. But while Daniel was in there, he had supernatural provision for something that he could not do by an angel that shut up the mouth of the lion. This is what you got to realize. Everywhere you go, you're nowhere out of reach of an angel of God. Whether you're driving in your car, about to get in a car accident, to whether you need food or something like that, to what, uh, what, what, whatever the supernatural case is, the angel of the Lord can be right there at any time to minister unto the heirs of salvation. Praise God. It was an angel that sent Philip to the desert to witness to the Ethiopian. It was an angel that told Cornelius to go get Peter. So he could hear the words of the gospel. It was an angel that killed King Herod. <laughs> Angels can kill people. Matter of fact, there were hundreds of thousands of people killed by one angel at a battle that Hezekiah was about to fight. One angel. 100,000 dudes just gone. Just one of them now. Amen. An angel stood by Paul when he was shipwrecked. Praise God. And it's going to be an angel one day, I believe big old Michael, is going to bind Satan for a thousand, a thousand years. Amen. So angels are present. Angels are active. They are active particularly at times of worship. We see the angels when Jesus is born coming to worship him. 
We see angels worshiping with the shepherds when they get the revelation of who Jesus is. This is why when you come in the house of God, you, you shouldn't come in being quiet, praise God. Because the angels are drawn to where the presence of God is, and the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So when you come into the house of God, you can come in with a praise on your heart, hello somebody, and a worship on your heart to, to invoke the presence of God. And you never know, a healing angel might step in. Don't forget, there was an angel that troubled the water at the pool of Bethesda. One time, and the first one that hopped in there, whoo, bet you're going to get out of your aisle next time, huh? <laughs> the first one that hopped in there got their healing. All this is angelic doing. Of course, they acted on behalf of God, but the Lord has a kingdom that cannot be seen. Angels are also immortal. They are spirits. And they cannot die, nor was given them the ability to reproduce with themselves or other spirits. Okay, so the angels can't reap, they can't get together with another angel and reproduce. However, there was a time before the flood of Noah that the Bible says the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And that is thought to be angels copulating with humankind, producing these men of renown, mighty men and Nephilim, or giants in the land. But God wiped all of them out in Jesus' name and saved Noah. Amen. And so the idea that someone becomes an angel when they die and gets a set of wings is not biblical. It sounds good, but it, there is no, nowhere in the Bible where that is seen, which is another reason why the devil hates you, because you can multiply. And he's been trying to kill the multiplication ever since God said, be fruitful and multiply. Because he knows that we are his replacement. He was created to cover God and worship and reflect the light. And Jesus said, you are the light of the, hello, and the salt of the earth. Hello. And we worship him now, praise God, without being forced to. Amen. And we can multiply. He can't multiply. So he sees you as his replacement and he don't like you for it. Mm. Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. So how many are there? The best idea we have is Revelation 5.11. I'll read it again. This is John before the throne. He says, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast. Now, these beasts are special, what we would call probably cherubim, uh, because there are four of them and they stand around the throne. We'll get to that in a second. And the elders and the number of them, the angels, was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. I don't know. I didn't do the math on that. I don't have a whole bunch of zeros on my notes. You do the math and figure out how many angels that is. That's a lot of angels. So for every devil, there's two holy angels of God. At least. At least. And we already know the ones that fell are the chumps because they already got whooped one time. <laughs> Amen. So I feel like sometimes we give the devil a little bit too much glory. We give him a little bit too much credit. He's a defeated, beaten foe. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Angels also have personalities and identities. Amen. Exodus 23, verse 20. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is him. So I said, don't, don't mess with this angel. How do you mess with this angel? Living a life of sin. Because mm. he said, uh, he's not going to forgive your transgressions. He's not going to pardon. So, so because you have to think of the angels where they dwell, they dwell in a holy place. In one portion of scripture in the Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible says they cry, holy, holy, holy. And the other ones respond, holy, holy, holy. Back and forth. Just worship back and forth between the angels. Now all this worship is, the whole chorus is holy. Imagine that's the only song we sing. Holy. Y'all be like, man, can we sing a new song? Nope. Holy. <laughs> holy. They have other songs, but we'll be singing a song that the angels cannot sing because they cannot be saved. Praise God. Amen. So these angels dwell in a holy place. 
So holy environments attract the presence of angels. Mm. Demonic sinful environments attract the presence of demons. This is why the people of God must be living a holy lifestyle. Amen. Not only do they have personalities, they have identities. Luke chapter 1, verse 16. This is funny to me. Zacharias said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? Give me some context. Zacharias in the temple, he's praying at the altar of incense, uh, uh, as was his custom during this time. And God gives him uh, a word. He's going to have a child. He's going to have a baby. But he's old, and his wife Elizabeth is old. So his question is, how do I know this? <laughs> whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife is well stricken in years. And the angel answers, answering said unto him, I am Gabriel. That's my angel voice. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent, to, <laughs> and am sent to speak. I need Canaan for this. And am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. So this angel, Gabriel, who's one of the archangels we, that, that we see mentioned in Scripture, he said, I, sent, I sit before the throne of God. This is a word directly from the throne of God. He identified, first of all, his name. There's only three names we get mentioned, names mentioned in the Bible for angels. Lucifer, Gabriel, and Michael. There's some other ones and some other books that's not in the Bible, but, you know, those are the three we can say are definitely there and get mentioned multiple times. Okay. This Gabriel, we see him as the messenger angel. He's the one that brings messages to Daniel. He's the one that brings messages to, to, to Zacharias. He brings messages to Mary that she's going to bear a child. And he's the one that gives her the name because he got it. Hello. <laughs> He said, this is what a name, so Mary didn't choose a name. That name was already chosen. Amen. And so, and because of Zachariah's unbelief, the angel struck him mute. He's probably trying to talk. He's laughing, but read the rest of the story. When he left the temple, everybody was amazed because he couldn't speak. And he's trying to speak, but he couldn't. And they knew something supernatural had happened in there. So he's like, <laughs> and it wasn't until John the Baptist was born that his speech came back to him. Amen. So what that tells us about angels? They have personalities. They have identities. <laughs> Amen. And so we also see Michael. Michael, we read it. He's the warrior angel. He's the one that the Bible says Michael and his angels. So it is supposed that the angels, in the same way that there is structure on the world, there is structure in the heavens amongst the angels. Michael being one of the archangels, Gabriel being one of the archangels, Lucifer also have been one of the archangels, which makes sense why a third of them would have fallen being submitted to Lucifer. Mm. Because Michael and his angels fought. The Bible says, against the dragon and his angels, and they prevail not. Because here's a clue. Lucifer is not a fighter. He's a worshiper. His power is in his mouth. Mm. And when he fell, it flipped from giving God glory to deceiving the world to try to give himself glory. Mm. The Bible says he's as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. Matter of fact, there's a scripture in Isaiah that says we're going to wonder at this guy, saying this is the one that received the whole world? This guy right here? This, this, this old worshiper right here? This guy? Yeah. But Michael and them, mm. amen. All right. There are special types of angels that are also mentioned. Remember, the term angel in the Old Testament is messenger. But the first actual mention we get of, a mess of an angel is a cherubim or cherub. In Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says God set cherubim in front of the tree of life with flaming swords to guard the way. Cherubim, we don't get a definition in Genesis 3, but we get a couple of definitions as we go forward. First of all, they're namely seen covering the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. 
you study the tabernacle, when God gave them the plan of the Ark of the Covenant, he told Moses to fashion two golden cherubim to sit on either side of the box, one on this side, you know, and one on that side. And the Bible says their wings were stretched towards one another. So cherubim are seen to be these winged angels. Uh, however, uh, we get some more detail in the book of Ezekiel because Ezekiel also sees cherubims. But the Bible says they have six wings. <laughs> and can you imagine seeing an angel with six wings? It gets worse. They have six wings. Two cover their face. With two, they cover their body. And with two, they fly. They also have compound figures with four different faces. One face is like a man. One face is like a lion. One face is like an ox. One face is like an eagle. So you do the depiction in your head what it would be like if you saw a cherubim manifest in his actual form. This is why most places in Scripture when an angel does appear, the first thing they say is, be not afraid. Because if you see a manifestation of an angel, it's not going to be like a beautiful little gargoyle-looking thing that sits on top of the Catholic churches, you know, or like a, a, a baby with a wing and a bow and arrow just coming to, no. You're about to look at some man, ox, lion, eagle-faced, six-winged being, and that's not all. It's got eyes all over in it that look all over the place. You read that description. That's a horrifying-looking creature. You would probably say, that's an alien. And you look at Ezekiel's description, the Bible says they don't turn when they move. And they zip from one place to another. So if you see them move, it's like, bzz, 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 bzz. that's it. Kind of sounds like a UFO. Especially when you consider that the bottom of that same angel has wheels. And the Bible says the life of it is in the wheels. And the wheel has a wheel in it that is turned the other direction. So it's like a wheel that goes this way and a wheel that goes this way. And everywhere the angels went, the wheels moved. So if you've seen a manifestation like that, you probably would say, look, there's a UFO. Looks like a circular wheel. And it had another wheel in it. And it goes, bzz, 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 bzz. So maybe people ain't been seeing aliens this whole time. They've probably been seeing angels, which technically are aliens. <laughs> so you believe in aliens? Nope. Angels. Every supernatural manifestation in the sky that we can't explain is probably a manifestation of an angel. Amen. Amen. And so, these are the cherub. There's another depiction called seraphim, seen in Isaiah 6, verse 1 through 2. In the first year, in the, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting up on, his, up on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims. And each one of these also had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain did he fly. The difference between cherubim and seraphim, the word seraphim means fiery snake. So these are snake-like creatures that hover above the throne of God. Which is probably what Lucifer was because he manifested as a serpent. Seraphim. Not the only time we see this word seraphim, we see it one more time in the book of Exodus when God sends a snake to bite them that were complaining about manna. The term is, he sent a seraphim. And those were angels that manifested as snakes to come and bite them. And what didn't God tell Moses to do? Take the rod and fashion a bronze snake. Hello, same term, seraphim. So the other type of angel we will see then will be seraphims. Uh, I, they, I said they can also be found in, no, not Exodus, that was Numbers, excuse me, when, when the snakes bite the people. Okay, so let's wrap this up on the first lesson. How can saints interact with angels? First of all, we do not pray to angels. Amen. Okay, we do not command angels. We do not worship angels. We do not adore angels. The worship of angels is idolatry. God hates idolatry. Okay. Angels work for God and do the will of God. We have authority and power in the spiritual realm when we pray. Jesus said to Peter, he said, thou art Peter. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. He said, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he said, I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom, that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So that happens through prayer. So what he was saying is that I'm giving you spiritual authority that when you pray in Jesus' name, the heavens will respond to what you pray. Meaning that when you pray, angels begin to move. Hello. Angels begin to move. That's a powerful thing. That may, probably make you want to pray a little bit more. Praise God. You're getting, a, you're getting some frustration on your job. You're like, Lord, mm, I'm going to need Michael or one of his goons in here right now. <laughs> I need you to be somebody else for me. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And so, so we, don't, we don't interact directly with God's angels. Now, the demonic angels we can interact directly with, and we're supposed to interact directly with. When a demonic angel manifests, you cast it out. Jesus said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. So why, wait a minute, I thought we didn't have no command over it. No, those are the holy angels of God. These demons have to submit to the name of Jesus, because Jesus is God. And you, being baptized in Jesus, now have his name, and having his spirit has his authority. So if you see a demon or feel a demon or get discernment that there's a demon around, you can speak directly to that. You don't have to pray that God cast a demon out. You can speak directly to the demon. We see this happen in multiple scriptures. I don't have them here. We'll talk about that in my next lesson, which will focus on demons. But you can speak directly to them. Paul one time spoke directly to a spirit and cast that spirit out. It's not, you know, just for the, the exorcist with the funny looking collars, okay? This is for every believer. If you've, got, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, you got the Holy Ghost, you can cast out devils. I don't care if they foam at the mouth. I don't care if they start crawling around like a snake. It's just manifesting what it really is, okay? I, I don't care if they start doing all kind of crazy stuff. At the name of Jesus, it's got to go, okay? Jesus even one time asked, who are you? And the demon said, we are legion. Because there's many of us. Okay, Mary Magdalene, if you remember, she had seven devils in her. Okay, so uh, these demons can manifest and possess people. Getting ahead of myself. But here's how we interact um, with, with the angels. I find this interesting. Notice this. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. And this is Peter. He's being put in prison. They're trying to kill him. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So Peter's in prison. The church is praying. Much like, you know, some of us get in trouble, need some prayer. You put on the little group. Y'all pray for me. I'm going through. Okay? This is like that's what's happening here. Verse 6, and when Herod, Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold... The angel of the Lord came upon him. He doesn't identify himself. We just, angel of the Lord. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Can you imagine? You're asleep. And that's, that's, the, that's got to be the most effective wake-up call ever. If an angel comes... Mm. get up, arise quickly. And his chains fell off. So the angel had already broken his chains off. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so did he. He saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. So now this angel has done a jailbreak for Peter. For real. While the church is praying, the angels are activated on Peter's behalf. This is why we got to pray. Because when we pray, it activates angels on the behalf of another believer or who we're praying for. That's why we get power when we pray, if, especially if we can come together and agree on some things. Praise God. We have more authority. We have more power that way. So they're praying. God sends an angel to get them out. And so, where did I leave off? Verse 8, and the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind thy sandals. And so did he. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And which not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So this is all happening. Peter thinks he's dreaming or having a vision. 
He don't even think this is real. Verse 10, when they were past the first and second war, they came into the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened, un, opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed, uh, passed, on through, passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. They're still praying for Peter to get out the prison. And here comes Peter knocking on the door. Verse 13, as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. She was probably in the prayer group. Somebody was there helping to pray for Peter to get out of jail. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. She was so happy that God had answered their prayer, she left Peter outside the house. <laughs> but ran in, I can see some of y'all doing that, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, you're mad. They are praying, but don't believe that God had answered their prayer and that Peter is out of jail. You're mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, look at this, it's his angel. Why would they say it's his angel? Because it's believed amongst the Jews that you have angels. And when your angels manifest, they look and sound like you. So they, they, these people are praying and thought, no, that's not Peter. That's just Peter's angel out there. He's still in prison. Only thing you're hearing is Peter's angel. And they just kind of told, they, they, they did that to shut her up. But verse 16, but Peter continued knocking. <laughs> when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. So how do we interact with angels? You've got angels. You got angels. That ought to take some of the worry out of your day. That ought to take some of the anxiety out of your life. Know that you are a Holy Ghost filled child of God and you walk together with angels. You ever wonder why the environment kind of changes when you go certain places? You, you, you ever wonder why? I wish the Lord would open up our eyes and give us a, a view of our spiritual entourage. Like we clicked up right here, for real. And I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about it in the church. I'm talking about spiritually. If you could just see what was coming behind a child of God that has angels sent to minister unto the heirs of salvation. That's watching your every move. And should you ever get in a predicament that God has not ordained for you to be in, God will deliver you out of that by his angels. There's been testimonies of, 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 of I, I had a testimony myself when I was first saved. I didn't realize it at the time. When I first got saved, I think it was like 2013, so I might have been saved a year or so. And I'm working at the Hard Rock, and I lived out in, I lived out in Citrus Park. And uh, I, had a, I had a 2004 Honda Accord. Love that car. It's gone now. Um, but I'm driving to work, and I'm coming around that, that, that inter, intersection where you get off of the veterans and go on to 275. You know how that's always a mess. So this day it was raining, and I came around that corner a little bit too far, and my back tire slid out, and I blacked out. All I could feel was something spinning like this. And when I woke up, I'm going eastbound on 275. No cars around me, but the whole, it was, it was, it was, it was 6 p.m. And if you know 6 p.m., there ain't never no cars around you on 275 at Veterans and, and right there by the airport. What happened? It was an angel. It was an angel. He blacked me completely out. It wasn't like I was about to hit something. My car just spun out. I should have been, you know, I should have been cognitive for the whole thing. I just blacked out. I, all I felt was spinning like this. And when I, when I came to, I'm, I'm, I'm driving like, not even like, 
you know how you try to correct your 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 your, your, your tail whip and all that. None. I'm just I'm just going straight. <laughs> I have no other explanation but the angel of the Lord. I've had heard many a testimony that people are interacting with angels of the Lord. And the Bible even tells us in Hebrews, uh, chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, let brotherly love continue, but be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So you never really know. God might be testing your spirit one day. You ever talk with somebody and you try to find them afterwards? And they're ghosts, and you know they can't run that fast? <laughs> it's happened to me multiple times. And that scripture pops up on my head like, ooh, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I bought him something to eat. Thank you, Jesus. Because mm. that's what Abraham did when he saw angels. These two men that manifest as angels. The Bible says he went and killed a calf and made them a meal and some bread and washed their feet and sat down and supped with them. So the same thing is, is with us. You never know how these angels will manifest, which means most of the time, they like to be unnoticed by man. Amen. But we can interact with the angel, not directly, but by proxy through God. We pray, and God answering our prayers, he sends angels to come and do that work. Amen. So it is appropriate for us not to command the angels, but to ask God, send your angels. David said, the angels of the Lord campeth round about them that fear him. So it is appropriate for me to pray, Lord, send your angels to encamp round about me. It is appropriate to say, Lord, send your angels into this neighborhood. Go bef the Bible says he going to send the angels before them in one scripture. So it's appropriate to pray, Lord, send an angel before us. We're getting ready to go on outreach. Lord, send your angels before us. We're getting ready to go in a sticky situation. You don't know how it's going to, you know. Lord, send your angels before us. Angels done a myriad of things. They've changed hearts. They've changed minds. They've changed scenarios. How do you think the walls of Jericho came down? There were some angels involved in that worship. When they blew them horns, boom, the walls came down, and now the children of Israel could go up. So we do have access to angelic beings. We are truly never alone. Um, you don't have to be scared about it. And please, for the love of God, don't, don't be a fanatic about it. Amen. Worship God. Pray to God. Talk to him. Get close to God. And God has an innumerable amount of angels with supernatural power to work on our behalf. Amen. I'm closing there. Let's, let's all stand. That's the first series. Next time we'll dive into more of the demonic side. Mm, Jesus. Mm, praise God. Amen. We've been fasting here this week. And... One thing that you'll, you'll notice if you read the scriptures closely concerning angels, they're attracted to, to the holy presence of God. And they're attracted to things that are in order or after the same pattern, okay, of God. This is why the Bible, speaking about women, says that they shouldn't cut their hair. They have power on their heads because of the angels. That's not speaking about the length of your hair. That's showing that a woman that has not cut their hair has revealed and reflected the pattern of the covering that is in heaven. And so they respond to that. And so it is very appropriate now when we start to consecrate our lives, when we start to get closer to God, that angelic presence will increase. Praise God. Amen. And so I believe that especially while we're fasting, we have more favor with God. And I believe we should just begin to pray some prayers, some, some big impossible prayers. Because we have a thousand times, ten thousands times, thousands of thousands of a supernatural force that are waiting for the children of God to activate our God-given authority in prayer in Jesus' name. I just feel like we ought to do that tonight. Anybody with me? Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to come to this altar if you'd like to pray. And we're going to pray tonight for any impossible situation. Maybe there's some family that you think is just impossible. Maybe there's some, maybe there's a job. You say, Lord, I just don't see how this is going to happen. Maybe there's favor that you need. Maybe you want to pray for somebody else. But we're going to pray today. And we're going to believe that as we pray, God will begin to move and to order the angels to move on our behalf. Come on, come on, saints of God, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight we thank you, Lord. 
we glorify you and you alone, Lord Jesus, for you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning, Lord, and the end. You're the first and the last who was and is and is to come. Father, you're the root and the offspring of David, Lord God. You are the mighty lion of the tribe of Judah, Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh God, you are he that walketh throughout the golden candlesticks, Lord Jesus. You are the light that is coming to the world, the light that lighteth every man, Lord God. You are our strength, Lord, and our song, and have become our salvation, Lord God. We fear you today. We love you today. We honor you today. We magnify your name, Jesus, for it is the name that is above every other name, oh God. We worship you today. We magnify you, oh God. We adore you, Lord Jesus, oh God. We praise you, Lord God, for all that you are, Lord God. The ancient of days, the mighty conquering lion, oh God. The everlasting, the almighty God, El Shaddai. We praise your name, Lord God. No one is like you, Lord. No one be beside you, O oh God. No one before you, Lord God. No one beneath you, Lord Jesus. You are the beginning, Lord, and the end, Lord Jesus, O oh God. You're the everlasting God. We worship you, Lord Jesus, O oh God. We magnify you today. We thank you, Lord God, that you in your omniscient, magnificent power and glory saw fit to save sinners like us, Lord God. We're not worthy of your mercy, but you showed us mercy. We're not worthy of your kindness, but you're kind to us. We're not worthy of salvation, but you shed your blood for our salvation. Oh, Father, so we praise your name, oh God, that you called us out of darkness, Lord, and into this marvelous light, that we can obtain mercy, that we can have your name, that we can be covered in your blood, that we can take on your righteousness, Father. We love you, Lord God. Lord, and we thank you, oh God. Father, we pray here tonight, Lord God, we bring our request before you, Lord Jesus, praying tonight that you will Avenge us uh, of our adversary, uh, all Satan, uh, the devil, uh, and all of his minions, uh, and all of his fallen angels, Lord God. Uh, we pray today, Lord God, uh, that you would rebuke them, Lord Jesus, oh God. Uh, we pray today uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, uh, for every soul uh, that Satan has deceived. Uh, I pray tonight, Lord God, uh, that you would loose them, oh God, uh, and let them go. Uh, send your angels, Lord God, uh, to remove the veil uh, of darkness, oh God. Him. That's over our family members him, that are lost, Lord God. Him. I pray tonight, him, Father, him, Lord Jesus, him, that you would send the same healing angel. Him. Oh God, him, that healed the man at the pool of Bethesda. Him. Send that angel, Lord God, him, to bring forth the healing him, right here to the church him, of the living God. Him. Lord Jesus, him, I pray today him, that you send angels, Lord God, him, into our communities, Lord God. Him to remove, Lord God, all drug abuse, Lord God, to remove, Lord, all prostitution, Lord, to cast down every child trafficker in Jesus' name. We pray in the name of Jesus that every devil must take their hands off of our children. Every devil must take their influence out of our marriages, out of our minds, out of this community, out of this church. We cast him out by by the name of Jesus and pray Lord Jesus that you send your angels Lord God send them before us Lord God to tear down every stronghold of the enemy send them before us Lord God to tear down every device of the wicked one send them before them Lord God to remove all idolatry in the name of Jesus Lord God to prepare the way for the people of God to execute your will upon this earth Lord while we yet remain we pray, Lord God, for the most impossible. For with you, Lord God, nothing is impossible, Lord God. Save, Lord God, to the uttermost, Lord. Bring, Lord, supernatural provision today, Lord, in Jesus' name. For those that are struggling with demonic oppression, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. For you, Lord, are the God of peace. You're the Prince of peace. 
And I pray tonight that you would allow peace that passeth all understanding to come into the hearts and the minds of every Holy Ghost filled believer here tonight. Father, let your will be done. Father, we praise you today, Lord God. We beseech you tonight, Lord God, for your power, Lord God, and your authority, Lord, to be manifest, Lord God, right in our houses. Let the angels of the Lord encamp there. All about our children. Let the angels of the Lord encamp round about them. How about our wives, Lord God? Send them out, Lord, with multitude of angels, Lord God, to keep them, Lord God, everywhere that we go, Lord God. Oh, God, let a holy host of the angels, Lord God, encamp round about them that fear thee, Lord God. Let a thousand fall at thy left side and ten thousand at thy right side. But it's not going to come nigh thee. For you, Lord, have sent a protection. You, Lord, will raise up a banner. You, Lord, will raise up a standard. You, Lord, are our shield. You're our buckler, Lord Jesus. You're a rock. You're the strong tower that the righteous run in and are saved. We lean on you tonight, Jesus. Father, when I pray that you help us to walk in all the power and dominion and authority that you've given us in the Holy Ghost. Father, from this day forward, when we pray, let heaven respond. When we worship, Lord, let heaven respond. When we do your work, oh God, let heaven respond. Let heaven begin to move. Oh God, for whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Lord, loose, oh God, your whole host of angels. Lord, for we're in the last day. This is an evil day. There's perversion. There's prostitution. There are liars, Lord God. There are people that are ordained and profane your word, Lord God. But Lord, I pray that the church will be a light in this dark time. That your holy host of angels would manifest on our behalf, oh God. Oh Lord, we trust you tonight. Oh Lord, we honor you tonight, Jesus. Oh Lord, we praise your name tonight. Lord, we already counted done, oh God. Oh, Santoro, oh Simon. We bless your name tonight, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, what it is, begin to call it out in Jesus' name. 